him his wife, isn't it? Yeah. Scum. Charming. So, fill me in. What's been going on? Well, Tosh is off sick, Martella's on leave, Woods is interviewing witnesses, and I've got half a team tied up on his handling case up the road. Uh, disposing of hijack container loads. That's right. Greg's been sat there all week. Carver's been there since yesterday waiting to give evidence, and now they've called Roach. So far, it's taken five days, and they haven't even got through the prosecution case yet. Mind you, Franey hasn't got a defence, so that shouldn't take long. Well, let's hope nobody commits a crime today. Mr. Roach, you tell us that after Mr. Franey was arrested, he told you where to recover the container with the stolen property. That's right, yes. Did you do any deals with it? No, Your Honour. Are you sure about that, officer? I am positive, Your Honour. Because Mr. Franey will say that you were offering deals throughout. Not just on his arrest, but later. Well, then he would be lying. Because there is no truth in that allegation whatsoever. Narika, could you uh, call Ted Roach or Jim Carver again for me, please? That bloke Saunders is coming up for review and we haven't done anything with him yet. All right, Sarge. Thanks. Straight ahead, please, madam. All right, love. I know where I'm going. Make yourself at home. Thank you, officer. Yeah, could I speak to Sergeant Roach or DC Carver, please? I did all those extra days for one row in the CAD room. I didn't have to. I was doing him a favour. I mean, I know I had that weekend off last month for my cousin's wedding, but how many weddings has Tony had time off for? Look, talk to Munro about it, Dave. He does the lighter. Oi, oi, oi. Come on, wake up, sunshine, mate. Let's get you on the pavement. You walk straight out into the road. It's that the young lady. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You're right, sir. You hurt? I don't know. I think my wife might be dead. She was verbally abusing people coming out of the Pentecostal chapel in Jubilee Street. She wouldn't move on. I strongly suspect that she'd been drinking. I'm a public nuisance, that's what I am. What's your full name, love? Up yours. She wasn't breathing properly. Well, like, where is she now? At home, at Cost Street. She's been ill. Have you called anyone? Like the doctor or an ambulance? Oh, I hope I'm getting these things back all right. You want a Carver or Roach? Yeah, look, I've got this bloke, Jimmy Saunders, suspected of burglary. He's been here all night. No one seems to want to do anything with him. Ted wants to interview him. Yeah, well, he better get a move on, sir. We can't hold Saunders forever, and he's coming up for a second review. Well, Ted's been called up to court. Oh. Well, do you want to interview him, Gov? Well, there's no point. I don't know enough about it. There's a whole string of burglaries Ted wants to put to him. Well, 15 hours is too long to hold someone without doing anything. Is there any evidence? Oh, barely enough to arrest him on, let alone charge him. All right, I'll have a word with Inspector Munro. Thanks. This it, sir. Well, she's upstairs, is she? Sorry, sir. I didn't want to hurt her. No, no, of course not. Sarah, ask her from 340. Go ahead, Dave. Did you offer Mr. Franey bail in return for money? No, I did not. As you will be aware, bail is nothing to do with me. It's a matter for the custody officer initially and then the court. And as you will be aware, the attitude of the officers on the case will be a very important factor. I'm not the officer in charge of this case. You are an officer involved in the case. And I suggest that you asked Mr. Franey for three grand and you'd have a word to make sure that bail was continued. Certainly not, Your Honour. On the 17th of November? Never. Because it was withdrawn from Mr. Franey soon afterwards, wasn't it? On the 25th of November. I haven't got these dates to hand, I and mean, we're talking about nearly a year ago. 
But if bail was withdrawn on that date, it would have been a magistrate's decision, nothing to do with me. But I believe there was police opposition to the continuance of bail on that occasion. I couldn't tell you, Your Honour. As I said, we're talking about nearly a year ago. <clears throat> Did you speak to Mr. Freyney on the 17th of November? I don't think I spoke to him after he was charged. Did you speak to him on the 17th of November, officer? I wouldn't have, Your Honour, no. If you would kindly show this to the witness, and there are copies for the jury. My lord, I am in a position to prove the photograph. That photograph was taken at a boxing dinner on the 17th of November. Oh, you're annoyed because you thought you had the trial all sewn up. It's not my fault. You denied seeing him. I denied speaking to him. She never asked me if I'd seen him. In that photograph, you and Slimer look as if you just announced your engagement. Oh, come on. I did everything by the book. As you always do. I didn't know Slimer was going to be there. You think a jury will believe that? Don't you? Of course. Thanks very much, pal. Oh, don't be so stupid. The DCI wants you to go straight to Atkos Street. Suspicious death. Right. I'll drop you off if you like. When are you going to bring my tea, love? Well, it's three o'clock. You got half an hour yet? Half an hour? I'm thirsty now. Sorry, that's the rules. Yeah, well, you will be careful not to put too much milk in it, won't you? Too much milk doesn't agree with me. I was at a boxing dinner. I went for a slash. He followed me. I left. End of story. Later, Ted. Right, then. Give us a buzz when he won't pick you up. Hey, George. Body's still upstairs, then, George. Oh, yes, Sarge. The FME hasn't arrived yet. There's something funny, though, Sarge. Her husband said he didn't want to hurt her. Hmm. Mr. Patton. I'm Detective Sergeant Gregg. This is Detective Sergeant Roach. I'm very sorry to hear what happened. Has your wife been ill? Yes. Had she seen the doctor? Well, she was always seeing doctors. I couldn't help her. Did the doctor come today? Oh, it was no use. She kept making this awful noise, trying to breathe. I couldn't bear to listen to it. So what happened then? I don't know. I went out. And where did you go to? Sarge. And your wife? I couldn't help her. Bit of a mess, isn't it? Mm. Telling me. Look at this. I don't know how a cup of tea is supposed to cheer him up. Here you are, sir. Mr. Patton, I realise this must be upsetting for you, but I'd like to run through with you what happened today. When you're ready. OK. So let's start with this morning. When did you get up? Well, I hadn't been to bed, really. Last night, then? What did you do last night? Um, I don't know. I, I can't think. Take your time. I found this in the kitchen, Mr. Patton. It contains sleeping pills. Your wife's name is on the label. Yes. It also has last week's date on the label. Can you tell me what happened to the tablets? Jane asked me. I mean, she just went on and on at me to do it. Do what? She wanted to die. But she wanted me to help her. Robert Patton, I must caution you that you are not obliged to say anything, but anything you do say may be given in evidence. He was arrested last night by the uniform for suspicion of burglary, found in the neighbourhood of a recent break-in. Ted stuck his name up on more than one occasion. Nothing found on him or at his home address. 
Authorised further detention this morning for interview by CID and nothing since then. Yeah, well, like I said, Ted's been called into court. Now he's been called of a suspicious death. Saunders has got a job and a permanent address. Look, if you don't want to authorise further detention... It doesn't seem to me that this investigation is being carried out particularly diligently or expeditiously. In fact, it doesn't seem to me that this investigation is being carried out at all. It's not my fault if half my team have been hauled into court to sit on their backsides all day. I'm not saying it's anyone's fault, Frank. But we can't just keep him here in case someone gets the time to interview him. Come on, then. What's this? Home time. I think I'd rather stay with my wife. It wouldn't take long, Mr. Patton. Couldn't I come down later? I mean, I ought to be sorting things out here. We'll take care of that, don't worry. It would make things a great deal easier for us if you came now. Look, I don't want to leave her. Well, listen, we got a couple of things to sort out. It'd be far better if we did them at the station. Jim, you stay here with the uniform. Wait till the doctor comes. All right, Sarge. If you could uh, sign here, please, Mr. Saunders. What for? It's to say your property's been returned to you. Right. Now, don't forget, you're bailed to return to this station one week from today at 9am. You lift me off the street, you drag me down here, you keep me hanging around all night and all day, and now you can't be bothered to ask me about anything? You don't even want to talk to me? Look, do you want to go home or not? If you wouldn't mind taking a seat in here for a few minutes, Mr Patton. Shouldn't take too long. Who's going to interview him? Well, you start it off. See if you can get in and out of him. You shouldn't have been so quick to caution him. I had to caution him after what he said. Well, he's hardly said a word since then. That's his privilege. Let's get the tapes, yeah? Where do you think you're going? Bail to return next week. What? Well, you can't win them all, Ted. Not on the same day. Jim, I found something inside. Do you want to take a look? Why don't you want to talk to us, Mr. Patton? You've already been told you can talk to a solicitor. Would you like me to call one for you? Are you worried about something? Have you got something to hide? Is that why you won't talk to us? Oh, I can't stand this. I know what you're after, but it's not my fault. I don't have to say anything, and I'm not going to. That's it, Jim. I've been on to the Patton's GP. She surprised Jane Patton's lasted as long as she did. Terminal cancer. Why wasn't she in hospital? She was. She went home to die. And he helped her? Was well, very possible. Mind you, she had more than enough morphine to have been able to top herself. I mean, if your number's up, wipe her along the agony. Whose idea was it? His or hers? If you'd have given it one more minute, we would have had him. Yeah, and the judge would more than likely have thrown it out of court for breaching that code of practice. Now we've got nothing. Won't you ever see that bending the rules will get you nowhere but trouble? What's that supposed to mean? You're not still thinking about Franey in this damn photograph, are you? I told you, I never spoke to him. If you'd bothered to put a note about it in the hey, file... what's going on? DS Greg will tell you all about it. It's his case. Noriko, do you want to uh, go and get yourself a cup of tea while it's quiet? Oh, great. Thanks, Sarge. <laughs> nice. If she was dying anyway, that makes it euthanasia, not murder. Same difference. Oh, come on, Gov. Look, she had days to live. And if he was trying to put her out of her misery... It's still murder. Unless, of course, it was her idea. She said, pass me the morphine, I want to overdose. In which case, it would be aiding and abetting a suicide. Only get 14 years for that. Life for murder. He could have been trying to help her out. I'm sure he was, Jim. Motive doesn't come into it. You got a property bag? We'll find one. Stick this in it and show it to DCI Meadows. Thanks, Jim. Mr. Patton, I'm Detective Chief Inspector Meadows. Take a seat, please. 
You can't keep me here. I want to go home. Robert Patton, I'm arresting you on suspicion of murdering Jane Patton. I must caution you that you don't have to say anything, but anything you do say may be used in evidence. But if it is murder, you can get life. That's right. Some more stuff on the bedside table, Steve. But if he was only trying to help, what's the point in banging him up forever? He's hardly going to do it again, is he? He'll probably go for diminished responsibility and get probation. There you go, Alistair. James Franey. Boxing dinner, wasn't it? That's right, 17th of November. Ted popped out for a slash. Slimer followed him. Ted came straight out again. Told me all about it the next day. Filled in the appropriate form. We sent it off to Area HQ. Right. He's in the clear. Does that surprise you? You want to keep a copy of that in your case file? Save a lot of trouble. Yeah, well, I would have done if someone had bothered to tell me. Right. Well, I'm off to Jane Patton's post-mortem. Oh, by the way, tomorrow, can you square it with counsel not to call me? Tell the judge I've got a lodge meeting. I'll do my best. It just doesn't seem right to me, Sarge. If she was in pain and she was dying and he was trying to help her out... It's against the law. Well, does it seem right to you? Doesn't really matter, does it? Which laws I approve of and which ones I don't. No, but it's not like murder, though, is it? It's exactly like murder. You're messing everything up. I mean, they're nothing to do with anything. I'm sorry, sir, but they might be relevant to our investigation. You'll get them all back later, sir. Please. They're my wife's things. So I see. She was the one with the money, wasn't she? Above the bright blue sky A friend who never changes Whose love will never die <coughs> Could you be quiet, love? Some of us are trying to work out here. What's for supper? So what we got then? Enough dangerous drugs to kill off half the street. And they're all prescribed to Mrs. Patton? Yes, sir. The yeah, I Burnside's attending the post-mortem. She was the one with the money, the house was in her name, building society accounts, insurance policies. But that's not a motive. Not when she was dying anyway. Now you're probably right. Though we don't know the terms of any will she might have left him. The reason he gave her an overdose was either because she asked him to or because he couldn't stand to see her suffer. I agree. I think Patton was motivated by humanitarian rather than mercenary interests. I still feel for him. He can't afford to, Jim. Not in his business. So, what are we waiting for? His brief. He decided he needed one. He decided right. Well, you know what it's like, sir. We've got a full house. Someone like a vagrant just wastes her time. I mean, what are we supposed to do with her? I mean, she's not a criminal. We're not social workers. And she can't stay in the cell forever. Yes, sir. Jane Patton, 34. Looks like death from natural causes, the cancer. There's no sign of anything else. We'll have to wait a couple of days for the toxicology, see if there was an overdose. All right, Gov. Why do you want to talk to us, Robert? We can all understand that if you love someone, you want to help them. Of course you don't want to see them in pain. Is that what happened? You wanted to help Jane because you loved her? Yes. It must be very distressing. I can sympathise with you. But not talking about it won't undo what's happened today. He can't bring Jen back. I know. I'd give anything if I could, though. Of course you would. Listen, we don't want to keep you here. If you give us your name, and if you behave yourself, you could be back outside in a little while. Rose. Rose Bates. You haven't got anywhere to go to, have you? That's the problem. Well, they were very nice at the hospital, but she, she just couldn't relax there. So she came home to die? She wanted me to look after her. 
And how did you feel about that? Well, I promised her. What exactly did you promise her? Well, that I'd look after her at home until the end. And that I'd help her. If she couldn't take any more. You mean you'd help her die? Is that what you promised her? For the benefit of the tape, Mr. Patton nodded his head. Could you say yes, if that's what you mean? Yes. So, what happened today? Oh, she was so ill. <laughs> she asked me a couple of days ago, but I've been putting it off. Well, she couldn't even speak today. She was... She, she couldn't breathe properly. She was choking for air. She kept looking at me, you know, but I knew what she wanted, but... I couldn't do it. Why didn't you call the doctor? She didn't want the doctor, she wanted me. What about the sleeping pills? I mixed them up in a glass of water. But I couldn't do it. I threw them away. She couldn't have swallowed them anyway. I'd, I'd have had to smother her or something. I'd, I couldn't do that, how could I? I loved her. What happened? And it, watching her choking to death, not being able to do anything about it, I, I ran out of the house, just wandered about, until I ran into you lot. So you didn't do anything? I couldn't. I let her down. Now let's get this straight. When you left the house, your wife was still alive. Yes. I ran out on her. I left her all by herself. So you didn't give her anything? You did nothing to bring about her death? No. So you've done nothing wrong? Haven't I? Hey, I had a bit of trouble at Crown Court this morning. Oh, yes. Don't worry about it. I know you played it straight, Ted. You've got no worries. I think you'd better bail Patton out. Oh, and how long before the full PM report on the toxicology? At least a couple of days. We'll bring him in next week. I don't suppose he's going anywhere. Right. Alistair, do me a favour. Next time, make sure a crime is being committed before you start cautioning people. That's all very well, but think about the time and the manpower that we wasted on all this. Yes, sir. Just a bit of thought. Could sign here, please, sir. If you explained earlier, you could have saved yourself all this trouble. Yeah. Have you got any family or anything? No, she died. Go home, mate. Go home and get some rest. Do you want to lift back? Uh, I can run you back, can't I? Sorry. Yeah, go on. Thanks. I should have helped her. I wish I had. <laughs> 